So earlier I motivated the need to add in another feature to our programming, and that's the ability to select uh, which track of code we want to actually look at. And so we looked at the problem that we have a gender issue here, that sometimes it's Jack fell down and broke his crown, but other times it might be Amy fell down and broke her crown. And so the idea is right here, uh, after Jack falls, I, I sometimes want to say, you know, J name fell down and broke his crown, but other times I'm going to want to be able to say uh, that, that, that the name fell down, in this case maybe Amy fell down and broke her crown. And so somewhere along the line in here, I have to make a decision. I have to decide whether I'm going to do this particular action, the his pronoun, or this particular action, the her pronoun. Right? And so we have to be able to select between one of those two actions. And so what we're interested in here is what's known as a selection statement. And selections, there are two ways. Uh, primarily that we do selection statements in Scratch. And I've purposefully uh, grabbed just screenshots of these rather than showing them to you right in Scratch as we introduce them right now, uh, because I want to just focus on just the blocks and not all of the things around them. The idea is that we want to be able to ask some sort of question, the answer of which will tell us what action we're going to take. Right? And so in this case, we're going to ask some question that says basically, if the person's name is a boy, name, then I want to use the block that says his crown. And if it's not, right, else, if it wasn't a boy's name, I want to use the block that says her crown, right? So we want to be able to ch select between the, the top block of code, his crown, and the bottom block of code, her crown. You'll notice that sometimes we don't have an alternative. Sometimes we're just going to say if something is, is true, then we want to perform an action. And if it's not true, we want to just skip it. Um, and so there's two forms of selection statements, a single track selection statement. If, if some action is true or some information is true, perform an action, and a double track. If it's true, do something, and if it's not true, if it's false, do something else, take an alternate action. And the question then is, how, well, what goes in this opening, right? What, what is it the question that we're going to ask, that we're going to answer that needs to go into that block? Notice, please, that, that the shape of this block is very, very different from blocks that we've been interested in, or excuse me, the shape of the hole is very different from any of the previous uh, holes that we've looked at. Up until now, the holes that we've dealt with, uh, up until in all the previous modules, the holes were, were pretty much circular because we put numbers in them, or rectangular because we, ex we put text in them. And you may not have really paid attention to that before, but the shape of holes tells you a little bit about what Scratch expects to go in there. Well, this particular hole has a, you know, a, this angle opening. Right, these sort of we, we might call this a hexagon opening, but we call this an angle opening. And so a different kind of block has to go in here. The block that goes in here has to be a block that produces a true/false or a yes/no answer. Right, and so. Again, I've just taken a screenshot uh, out of Scratch just to focus on the ones I want to start with. Notice that if we go to the, uh, there are these three green operators, and so that should tell you right away where it will be in Scratch, right? The color is green, so we know what menu it comes from. It's that operators menu. And we have three to begin with that have this angular uh, edge on them rather than being circular or square. And these are all questions, if you look at them, that are going to produce true or false or yes or no answers, right? So we can compare uh, two numbers, for example, and say, you know, is 7 less than 9? And that question is going to produce an answer of either true, 7 is less than 9, or false, 17 is not less than 9. And so we can ask less than, we can ask are these two things equal to each other, or is one greater than the other, right? And so we can take those and put them inside of the holes for these uh, selection statements. And then if that what's in there evaluates to yes or no, true or false, um, we, we decide which of these actions we're going to take. OK, so let's look at how that then is going to be put together in this particular program. We know then that we're going to need to be able to ask some kind of question that, that selects between these two things. right? So I'm going to go to Control, and I'm going to pull out the, the two-track 
selection statement, the if else. And we know that we're going to ask some kind of question where if the answer to the question is true, we're going to say his crown. And if the answer is false, you know, else, we're going to say her crown. And so notice that, that you know, we can put code inside of those openings. Just like we put code inside of the openings for uh, the repeat blocks, we can put code in there. And you can put as much code in here as you want, right? I mean, there can be two or more blocks in there. There doesn't have to be just one line of code in there. But we're going to do this. We're going to say if the, the answer to some question is yes, then we're going to say his. And well, we want to do this based on whether or not the person's name that they gave us is a boy's name or a girl's name. And we don't have a good way to, to analyze that automatically. So I'm just going to take the easy way out here. And we're going to ask Mother Goose to ask another question. So after she asks, what's your name, we're going to have, have, her, have her ask, are you a boy or a girl? Right? And then we want to store that answer, their gender. And so we can say, we can compare down here what answer they gave. And if they gave the answer boy, we want to say this. So let's make a new variable. Right? I want to make a variable that we'll call gender. Uh, and I don't want to see this, so I'll turn it off. And after I ask the question, are you a boy or a girl, I'm going to, we can move this out of the way a little bit, I'm going to set gender to. Uh, the answer that they gave me. Right? So I'll set gender to the word boy or the word girl. And so down here, I want to know if I set gender to boy, then I need to use the pronoun his. And so we'll go to the operators block and we'll use this equals block, right? the equals uh, comparison operator. And I want to know if the gender they gave me equals boy. If it does, then we're going to say so-and-so fell down and broke his crown. And if it's not, and so technically, as, as if they give me anything, right? If they, if they give me dog, I'm still going to say her. If they said, uh, you know, unicorn, I'm still going to say her. Uh, only the word boy will trigger the pronoun his. And so we can run this back out again. What's your name? Ben, are you a boy or a girl? I'm a boy. So the story of Ben and Jill, we have to kind of go through this a little bit. Ben and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Ben fell down and broke his crown. And I'm just going to stop it right now. And now let's rerun it. And let's rerun it with Amy. Are you a boy or a girl? I'm a girl. Amy's a girl. And we'll run that. The story of Amy and Jill. Amy and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. We'll forgive the fact it's still a boy icon or a boy sprite. But now it says Amy fell down and broke her crown. Perfect. That's what we want to do. So the idea is we can use a selection statement to select between one of two possibilities. So in conclusion, in this lesson, we've looked at the use of two new control blocks, the if block and the if else block, both things that we refer to as selection statements, a one-way selection statement and a two-way selection statement. Before you view the next lesson, I'd like you to think about ways that this selection statement or these, these two selection statements can change what you can do with your students.